Hello, and welcome to Kids' Stuff, a Chucky podcast, a haunted MTL original podcast. I'm your host, David Davis, and my guest this week is an old friend of mine, Phil Gibson. Hello. Hey, Phil, how you doing? I am doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing pretty well as uh, I'm doing pretty well as well. We talked about the yarn in my cat's butt, so that was fun. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a, <laughs> a a great visual you put in my brain there before we got started. So it was like she had two tails. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, we're going to be talking about the second episode of the Chucky Television Show. But before we get into that, I'd like you to uh, introduce yourself to the uh, audience of the show. Let us know like what sort of creative endeavors you do, what sort of storytelling experience you have, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I've been drawing comics and cartoons pretty much my entire life. Is uh, um, what I've been doing. Uh, I never really seriously took writing as as um as a thing that I would do because I, I never really wrote any sort of long form things. Um, and then I started getting into web comics and my first web comic was like a single panel gag strip, kind of like far side. But, uh, I got kind of bored with that after a while. So I just started writing, uh, writing my own longer form comics. And I was like, Oh, we'll just start with like five pages or whatever. And, eventually the first comic I started working on ended up being like 700 pages so and, and that was Lancaster the ghost detective right yeah that's the one that's the one um and which I which I really appreciate it because it's not often you see comics like web comics specifically have like a, a def definite ending a definitive ending but like Lancaster actually had an actual ending which like blew my mind as I was reading it <laughs> yeah, I and and that sort of thing has become way more commonplace these days, especially because yeah. like a, a lot of older ones have just decided to to end. And I ended it because I decided I liked writing, but I wanted to write other things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I tried to write a whole bunch of other things, and a lot of them didn't really take off. But that's okay because. Well, you know, that's writing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, so so what's the current project? Anything in the works right now that you're prepping or is is going on? Um, I am trying to build up a pitch document for all of the uh, series that I've come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, I've not really uh, written a whole lot specifically on it because I'm just I'm just starting it out but it's mm -hmm. going to be like these are the documents that I'm going to use to show to different companies to to or people who are interested basically here's my stories that I've come up with and here are the characters here's here's basically the rundown of everything um yeah I mean that's a that's a smart thing to do too because you always have that in your pocket and you can always go back and kind of tweak it as you need to. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I just never really had that sort of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I if somebody would ask me like, oh, what's what's this? What's one of your comics about? I'm like, I kind of have to try and remember mm -hmm. what it is because my memory hasn't been what it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's. I, I've kind of issued everything else that I've been doing to to work on this thing specifically because uh, if I don't get it done like mm -hmm. soon, it's just not going to get done. So I, I I think instead of just trying to continually create more specific comics and stories to just kind of get everything together and then decide where I want to go from there. And will you be, like, showing those off as you do them, or are those just kind of, like, keep them in your pocket? Uh, well, I am actually showing the, showing off the process of going through each one on my Patreon. Oh, link. shit. I will drop that link in the show notes. <laughs> uh, I, I just put up a post about it. It's like, I, I'm stopping all of my other projects. I'm doing just this, and I'm going to be showing how each one is created from the from the genesis of the idea to mm -hmm. the actual complete because I have kind of like an outline for each one and each of the yeah. series is going to fit right into that so 
I've got a lot of work ahead of me, but I, I, I think it'll actually be worth it in the end. So, Well, I, I applaud you for like taking the time to do that, because so many of us are like, we want to do that, and we just never do it. But you're actually doing it, which you know, I, I'm very uh, impressed by that. Yeah, I, and I, I, I've had a hard time actually starting up any of those things, so I figure if I, if I lay everything out, kind of get my head on straight and see where everything is, it should be easier to, to pick which direction I want to go. So, well, it makes sense to me. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about horror as a genre. Are you into it? I am. I am pretty hard. Well, I wouldn't say pretty hard into it. I'm still. Kind of, I don't want to say new, but mm-hmm. I right now I have kind of like a very uh, narrow palette as far as stuff that I've seen because like, I didn't like really. I'm, huh? I'm sure you're into slashers, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. think like uh, Friday the Thirteenth was. Mm-hmm was probably the the biggest one for me when I finally got into into horror but I stayed away from it for a, for a long time because you know I was just a coward as a, as it as scared a, you as a kid <laughs> yeah and and it didn't help that like I went to uh d- uh day school uh when mm-hmm. I was in elementary school so I'm like Six or se- six or seven years old, and my both of my parents worked. So during the summer, they wouldn't let me stay home. I'd have to go to uh, day school, and every now and then we'd have movie night, and or not movie night, but movie day, where we would just watch a whole bunch of movies. And sometimes they would like show Nightmare on Elm Street or Critters <laughs> or something like that. And that sounds I was, great. <laughs> I well, yeah, now it does, but I was just terrified of that i would yeah. go i would have to go and sit in another room while they were showing nightmare on elm street <laughs> or something like that so well, I, I i'm not going to go into like my horror background because i've gone over that a few times in the podcast but definitely you need to listen to that first episode so you can hear my uh my chucky story Ooh, like because i uh, i watched it a lot as a little kid and i have a i have a very fun story about that you're gonna love <laughs> yeah i want i want to get into it because like the the first time that uh, I heard about Child's Play was mm-hmm. a- again when I was in day school, and one of the mm-hmm. one of the teacher counselors, whatever there, had seen it, and she was kind of describing the the movie to us. So I had this kind of like very vivid <laughs> idea in my head of what was going on in the movie, except in my head, Chucky was like some sort of weird little rag doll sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, like, a couple of weeks later, we went to the video store to rent some stuff. And, and the, uh, they had the big Child's Play um, poster up, you know, where he has the toy knife and all that. Mm-hmm. And th- that was, like, ten times more scary than I, I was imagining. And I couldn't <laughs> stay in my room because I thought Chucky was in my closet and was going to come out while I had so- my back turned. So, so how much Chucky stuff have you like? What's your Chucky experience level? How much of the content have you seen? I've seen all of the movies, mm-hmm. and in fact, Child's Play Two was the first one, first horror movie I ever watched all the way through. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I. I went... That's a good one, though. That's a good one for. Uh, I think for people who aren't super into horror, I think Chucky is one of those uh, great ways to kind of introduce it, and I think Child's Play Two in particular is good for that. Yeah, that was because you don't you didn't really need to see the first one. Could they kind of cover it pretty good at the very beginning? Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so, it was it was really good, and that I guess that's kind of what got me started really looking into horror movies. So uh, yeah, so that, that's that's cool that like Chucky kind of broke the ice for you in that sense. Uh, of the movies, though, which do you feel is your favorite? I would probably still have to go with Child's Play 2. Yeah, that seems to be like the fan favorite. Yeah, it it's really good. I've I've seen the other ones, like I just said, I've I've seen all the other ones, but they really haven't stuck with me as much as the second one has. Mm-hmm. But but they were still a lot of fun to watch. Well, and it sounds to me like you're like prepped for for the TV show. So, 
I know that we're talking about episode two here, but you did see that first episode, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I I saw um, what? Uh, not Cult of Chucky. What was the one that came before that one? Curse. Curse of Chucky. Yeah, I saw that when that hit Netflix, and that got me primed for Cult of Chucky. Mm-hmm. And so I saw that when that one hit too. Mm-hmm. And then they said, "Hey, we're doing this this Chucky series." I'm like, "Oh." Well, sh- I am on board for this because I want to see if they're going to continue where uh, Cult of Chucky ended off. Oh, yeah. So Now, what what was your impression of that first episode of the show, just before we kind of dive into episode two? I think it's, it, it's pretty interesting. I, I kind of wasn't gelling with the... Um, with, like, the teen drama story going on at the first half. Mm-hmm. I was kind of kind of starting to bounce off of that, but uh, I I think it got me pretty hooked by by the end of it because that's when like they're they they finally got set up like the concept of the show where kind of going back to the first movie where the mm-hmm. the the one guy knows that Chucky is alive and is doing stuff and nobody else believes him and oh, oh yeah and complete with that throwback to Child's Play one where Chucky like slaps him and yeah falls to the ground yeah that um and then when I when I talked about this uh, first episode with Kevin who was my last guest we we're talking about how like the uh, the pilot episode of the show kind of rhymes with the entire series. You find these little bits from the entire franchise that kind of work their way into the episode. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, I I I don't I I guess I don't know what I was expecting out of the show, which is kind of why I, I kind of bumped off the uh uh the drama at the start of it, the like, quote unquote teen drama. But uh after reviewing the second episode, I'm pretty much all in on it now. Yeah, and you know, and, and like, yeah, like I'm normally not like a teen drama sort of person. Um, like, yeah, I, I watched Riverdale for a while, but then I dropped off in like season two. But um, like, I like the I like the teen drama approach with uh, Chucky so far. I think that I think the teenage characters have been pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think the thing that I didn't really like is that like everyone was mean except for Jake, mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. And I don't really have like a taste for when every character is just an absolute jerk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you got to have some like nice kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I I think they did a pretty good job turning that around on the second episode. Yeah. So I, I guess what we should do is probably start talking about the second episode. So I just want to cover a couple of things real quick before we kind of talk about specific moments. Okay. So uh, the second episode was a Halloween set episode titled "Give Me Something Good to Eat." Uh, it took me a while to track down the director, because I didn't really see them in the credits, but the director was uh, Dermot Downs, and the writers were series creator Don Mancini, uh, then you had uh, one of the other writers was Harley Payton, and then Kim Garland, who is the staff writer for the show. So, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, let, let's talk about, like, what's your favorite moment in the episode? Start there. I I I got to say one of my favorite moments was was seeing Chucky walk up in the Hello Kitty mask with the eyes <laughs> gouged out. I I think that's probably like the moment for people mm-hmm. in this, but uh I that was a really fun visual for me. Yeah, what what I really appreciate about that is it kind of brought back the techniques from the old child's play movies where you have like a toddler or a kid dressed in like the Chucky outfit and you have them do stuff in the background. Yeah. Which makes yeah. it look really creepy. Like, earlier in the episode, when uh, Junior walks into the house before they find the dead housekeeper, um, you see Chucky, like, run up the stairs, and it's clearly a toddler in an outfit. But, like, <laughs> it, it, the the movement, like, I love it when they do movement stuff with Chucky like that, but the uh, the Hello Kitty mask, yeah, that, that scene, that whole sequence was incredible for me. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I love the lady giving out candy. Mm-hmm. Uh, just... Let me see. Like, like she's just giving out candy, and she says, "When I was your age, I was high as a kite." And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, some of the adults uh, in the show are just really, really funny. But yeah, like her, yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I was high as a kite." Yeah. Um, now, uh, one one thing that I uh, learned about recently, thanks to IMDb and like looking it up, is that this isn't the first time that you've had like Hello Kitty and Chucky come together. 
um, specifically in uh, 2000, I think 2018 or 2019, uh, Universal Japan did a Hello Kitty uh, toy set uh, for Chucky, uh, Tiffany, and Glenn. Uh, I sent you a picture of that, but it's it's adorable, but also kind of horrifying. Oh yeah, this you said this one came out in like 1999. Uh no, about 2000, uh, or 2019. 2019. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what are numbers? Um yeah, and it was just uh, I think it was part of like their Halloween promotion at Universal Studios Japan, but like Hello Kitty as uh, Chucky, and then in the show you got Chucky as Hello Kitty, which I I thought that was like a really cute little. Like it has to be a nod, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you know that that little uh, a little Hello Kitty mask, and yeah, you pointed out like the eyes were all like broken in and stuff like that, so it made it nice and twisted. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, one one scene that I really appreciated was Chucky playing with. Uh, I think her name was Charlotte, the the little sister of uh, uh, the bully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that oh, was no, another Caroline. kind of. Uh, yeah, her name was Caroline. Yeah, that was another one of my favorite parts of the of the episode because mm-hmm. they're you know they're they're just sitting there and you know just having this rapport that is is <laughs> kind of kind of weird to see you know because but, but Mar- is it that weird because we see that in Child's Play three with uh, I, I keep forgetting the kid's name uh, but yeah in Child's Play three when the little kid. Uh, takes Andy's package and it, Chucky just like he's like oh I'll play hide the soul with this kid but it's just kind of them like bonding in a weird way well not 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 necessarily Chucky's very much grooming him but yeah yeah um, well I guess I mean like more in the context of dealing with everyone else because Chucky normally just kind of keeps his identity more of a secret like. Mm-hmm. N- you don't really expect him to be, you know, hanging out in the basement of a house where a party is going on, you know, playing video games. Yeah. But well, but, I think it's also like indicating a little bit of a character change for him because since, uh, you know, uh, Cult of Chucky, like you can have multiple Chucky. So I, I'm not I'm seeing that he's like at least this one, this copy of Chucky is a little more reckless with his presence. Uh, like take for example in the first episode the um the ventriloquism scene. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so like I I don't know I think it, I think it's a neat little bit of character work, but it seems like Chucky's kind of getting uh, a little bold since there's that ability for there to be multiple Chucky's. Yeah, and, and that was another thing I was I I wonder if I I mean they'll have to address it in the show right like there yeah. being multiple Chucky's now. Yeah, because like, you not only have the dolls, but you have uh, uh, Nika, who is uh, who's Chucky at this point. So it's like, uh, and th- that's the other thing about this episode is when Chucky talks about how he didn't kill the um, the housekeeper, um, like he could just be like lying about that. He could just be grooming Jake, but also he could very much be telling the truth, and it was another Chucky because there might be another Chucky running around. Oh, I hadn't considered that. Yeah, because I know in some of the promotional stuff, they had um, they showed that there were some other Chuckies running around. We know that uh, Tiffany is in the town, and we know that we know that she dropped off the Chucky doll at that yard sale. But like, I'm wondering like how many other Chuckies might be running around. Hmm, I might have to go back and rewatch the first episode then. To, yeah, because see what I missed. Yeah, because just like a little blink and you miss it. You don't even see her face. You see it's it's the it's her from the back, and she's got that very red coat from um, uh, Cult of Chucky. But yeah, it's most definitely like Tiffany Valentine. Oh, um, okay. You know, and it, it just I, I feel like there's probably a second Chucky running around at this point that we're just not aware of yet. Yeah, that 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 might be the case. And, you know, once once multiple Chucky starts showing up, things are going to get, like, really messed up right away. But I, I feel like they're already setting that up to a degree. Yeah, so, yeah. And, 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 yeah, that and also I want to see what uh, what this specific Chucky has has in mind. Because he's, he's, he's trying to, 
he's got bigger fish to fry. I think he said at some point. Yeah. So like, I definitely think that he's grooming Jake. Um, cause, oh, cause we see, we, we see that Chucky, like as he's gotten older, he's tried to manipulate people. Like, we, like when he was trying to teach Glenn slash Glenda how to kill in seat of Chucky, um, you know, he, Chucky kind of gets off on manipulating people. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know how much of it is him being sympathetic to, to Jake. I think there's an element of that. But I also think, like, Jake would make a fun scapegoat for him to cause chaos as well. Yeah, and and I think that there might be something to that, that, um, that he has some sympathy for Jake because of the whole conversation about him having his... Uh, having his gender fluid kid who's yeah and that that was that was a fun line um you know he's like yeah you know i have a queer kid and then he's yeah. like um and he's like oh yeah i'm not a monster <laughs> but yeah. you know how how much of that is genuine and how much of that is him just again trying to manipulate this kid yeah yeah and i i think it can be both yeah sure but i th- i feel like it's more him trying to mani- manipulate him to get what he wants. Yeah. Uh, okay, so can we talk about the most horrific thing in the episode, which was uh, Lexi's costume? Oh, yeah. Um, Dude, holy shit. Okay, yeah, that, that, that was kind of like a... It felt like an important part of the episode to me. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, because... The, okay, this note I have here... When she's talking to her parents about having mm-hmm. to go to, about wanting to go to the Halloween party instead of taking uh, uh, Caroline to trick or treating, uh-huh. she says she has a super expensive costume. And, right. like, how was that costume expensive? <laughs> well, and, you know, it, it almost makes you wonder if maybe she had a different costume in mind, but. To lash out, she was able to put together the 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 Logan costume. Yeah, that that might that. See, that, see, yeah. I just don't know. But it's, one one thing in that whole sequence, like number one, it's incredibly fucked up, you know, to to bully Jake like that. But then, in a way, she's also bullying her boyfriend Junior because that's yeah. Junior's uncle. Yeah, incredibly messed up. Yeah, but the, and, but there's this moment when she's doing her little electrified dance. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. at one point she sees Jake and you see just like a slight change in her expression, I think, where she realizes what she's doing, but she goes through with it anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely noticed that too. So uh, where she just has that moment of realization, like, oh, this is kind of messed up what I'm doing. But, Mm -hmm. but then she keeps, you know, doing, cause she kind of wants to, she wants to save face in front of, you know, everyone in at the school she she doesn't want to well and then we're all you know it's important that they gave us that scene of her at home with her mom uh, and her dad um because it definitely gives her a little more character like she's still a terrible person but at least you can kind of understand where she's coming from and all this shit yeah like yeah definitely before any of that if you were to ask me i would say oh lexi's definitely gonna get it before this the before the series is over now, now, uh, based now on I'm, yeah, yeah, now I'm not so sure. Yeah, do you think there might be some redec- uh, redemption ahead for uh, Lexi? I think, I think there is. I think there there will be some redemption for Lexi at some point. Yeah, I feel like that's the case. Um, like, I, I think the actress has done a great job of playing the bully, but I'm also seeing like some real vulnerability in her performance as well, which like is not something that you give to a character who you're gonna dispose of. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, in the first episode, she's like, oh, she's just the bully, you know? She's not going to really have much else to do in the show. Well, and until the until the ventriloquist act, when she's the target of it, and you see that, like, it genuinely it genuinely gets to her. Yeah, and, and um, it's nice to see that she is into Pokemon porn as well. <laughs> as well, as we all are. <laughs> um yeah just something about brad dora saying pokemon porn man that's just gonna yeah. it's gonna live in my head forever I'm, I'm so happy that's a thing that actually happened yeah um so um w- one thing i wanted to talk about was the scene where uh junior and lexi uh i i'm assuming they were going to have sex like 
they 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 didn't cross that line though. But like yeah. that like that that scene with Chucky under the bed trying to stab them, that was that was a lot of fun. Really funny. Yeah, yeah. It it, it feels like um and I was thinking about this earlier. Um where Chucky is starting to become not not Looney Tunes esque, mm-hmm. but definitely a bit more comedy than than most of your average horror is, mm-hmm. because it, it seems like that that they're trying to get Chucky to be like the the middle between Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers or something like that. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good description of it because like the series has swung wildly into the humor territory and it didn't necessarily land like when we're talking about like uh bride and seed of chucky yeah they they went too far on the the comedy angle and that's kind of why those aren't as well regarded however when they swing back to a little more self-aware a little more horrific with um curse and cult like i think it re-energized everybody yeah and 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 like if you Chucky can be like a wiseacre and make make jokes and everything, and that's okay. But w- when when you start putting in like adults like the trick or treat lady, you know, mm-hmm. where you have where you have these characters that have this kind of humor flavor to them, mm-hmm. I think it helps to kind of even it out because then yeah, you don't have like the the one like fictional quote unquote character to to carry all of the comedy that just doesn't work right and it's you know at least with the humor with the old lady who's handing out the camp uh candy talking about how she was getting high um like that's realistic you know what i mean like that's a that's a character trope that doesn't seem like overly exaggerated or anything like that you can you could hear an adult saying that you know yeah probably so not I, to yeah. kids but well i i don't know i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe she just has like a tendency to overshare or something. Yeah, you know, it, but it doesn't seem like too out of place. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 kind of what I'm getting at because it's not like super over the top mm-hmm. comedy, and and that I think that you can do kind of like a good middle ground like that. Now, this is the second episode, so it has to do a lot of heavy lifting after a pilot episode. Uh, and I, I think like the second episode is usually like the most important episode of a series because the pilot doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly deliver like what an average episode will be. The second episode is the one that does that. So as a second episode, how do you think this one did? I think it did pretty good because it expanded on a lot of ideas from the first episode. Mm-hmm. And and kind of fleshed out all the characters a little bit more because, uh, in addition to to showing Lexi's home life, they had um, they did a lot with uh, uh, Junior's Junior. Junior's parents in this one too. Yeah, because you got to see like, oh, he's he's pushing his kid super hard and trying to live vicariously through him because he's mm-hmm. like, are you and Lexi still together? Because I think you two make a great couple. You know that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, and, when Junior comes down with the medals, and the dad's like, oh, my medals. Yeah. 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 And, and when the detective is asking his mom about where, um, uh, is it Alice? I, I wrote this down. The mm. the maid. The maid. Mm-hmm. When, yeah. When, when she's oh, asking Alice, this, like, are, are we talking oh, about I Brady Bunch here? <laughs> that That's yeah, just why. Alice I'm, the maid I, from Brady Bunch? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's. That's where I, your mind went. Yeah, because <laughs> she kind of looked Annie. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. I I I'm not too good with like names from television. Oh no, tr- trust I'm, me. I, yeah, I'm, I'm in a classroom where everybody is wearing masks, so it's taken me forever <laughs> to like learn the names of my students. Yeah, yeah. but uh, 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 yeah, you you get the the thing where Annie practically raised Junior, and mm-hmm. when the detective asks his mom about it, she's like, "Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't know where she lives." And yeah, like, it, yeah. She's there, been working a little class with commentary there. Yeah, it's like, ah, uh, geez, you're you're kind of an asshole, aren't you? <laughs> you know, and it, it's it's the same kind of situation because you know they're they're not equipped to take care of a traumato- uh, traumatized child like Jake. Yeah, 
and it's just like the the adoptive uh the adoptive uh or the the foster parents and child's play too they're perfectly nice people reasonable but they're not equipped to deal with a traumatized child so it's another one of those ways that like the series is kind of rhyming within itself yeah yeah but and... what would you think of that kill or was it a ki- or was it a kill oh it was totally a kill unless they had like Unless there's another Chucky running around, <laughs> there's a stunt. <laughs> there's a stunt made. They've got a stunt. But yeah, made. yeah. I I always when I had a dishwasher, I have to I have to wash all my dishes in the sink because I'm a dishwasher. But um, when I had a dishwasher, I would always put the blades face down. Anyone who puts the f- blades face up, uh, they they get what's coming to them. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but <laughs> like, yeah. how the fuck are you supposed to pick it up if you have a face up? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then you're just making the blade dirty. Yeah, you're exactly. So, uh, so I think it was the housekeeper's fault, her own fault. Well, I saw, <laughs> I saw like, um, what is it? Uh, I was watching some other YouTube channel, uh, mm-hmm. and it was reviewing the second episode, and they brought up the the idea that maybe Chucky is the one that put them in the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. So maybe he said, I, I don't know. Because Does you that know, count as premeditated murder? I would think so, because, <laughs> she, she, yeah, she goes down, and the drawer is already open. She's like, huh. Open you know? shut case. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in general, it was it was kind of an okay death, I guess. It wasn't... It wasn't the vomiting, the whiskey, and electrocuting the uncle to death, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but how how do you follow that up, really? Right. Well, <laughs> that, that's the thing, because I... Uh, I talked to a previous guest about how like the best and most pointed violence in these things is always directed at Chucky. Oh yeah, so, definitely. So I, I'm looking forward towards the end of the season when like they take down a Chucky doll and I'm looking forward to seeing like the terrible, terrible things they are going to do to it. Cause that that's always been like the highlight for me. Cause a lot of Chucky's kills are pretty basic in the movies. They got a little more creative as they went on, but a lot of them are just like stranglings and stabbing, uh, stabbings and pushing people off of tall, tall things. Yeah. I, but, I don't. Uh, I don't think there's ever been really a better uh, person death in Child's Play than in the second one, where the guy gets in the the doll machine, has his eyes uh-huh. punctured out. Yeah, his, he I, gets the fake eyes. Yeah, I I think yeah. that's probably the highlight of of that. And although I did like John Waters being dissolved by acid in uh, yeah, Seed that one. yeah, yeah, that, that one was really good. really good too. And uh, um, oh. What's, what's the guy's name? Uh, Red Man? Yeah, oh, yeah Red, Red Man. <laughs> the, that the, the one was ballad. really good, too. So. Yeah, so, like, Chucky does get uh, some good kills in there, but I think on the whole, though, like, his kills tend to be kind of basic. Yeah, um, yeah. Because uh, Chucky, he's not so much, like... I, I was talking with uh, one of my other guests, Kevin, and we were talking about Chucky as, like, a process killer versus a product killer. Yeah. And uh, Chucky's most definitely a process killer. It's a lot of setup, uh, set up a lot of toying, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. He's more like a an opportunist than someone who's trying to show off, I guess. Yeah, he he'll kind of like observe a situation, and yeah, when he sees the opportunity, like if he sees someone, if he sees someone by an open window, or like in um, uh, Cult of Chucky, when he sees someone strapped down under a skylight. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I know that you have like you said something like three pages of notes, right? <laughs> yeah. So please hit me up with that. I, I would love to like just uh, bounce off of all of these with you. Well, it it's more like uh, just like a list of stuff that happened in the episode uh, uh, okay, and stuff yeah. that I think is notable. Like it, the the funniest line in the whole thing for me was uh, when Junior was talking about toasted skin syndrome. <laughs> At the very beginning, he's like, it's a real thing. It happens all the time. And his mom turns around and says, not in Alexis, it doesn't. <laughs> and that, that got the biggest laugh out of me throughout, See, I, throughout the episode. I, I, I think I think my favorite was when uh, Chucky was telling uh, Caroline that, like, your mom's working her way up my list. That's Yeah, that's another one I put on here. But I, I think that's probably, like, the, the basic, like, most quotable line in that episode. Like, every episode... Is probably going to have like a key line that's like you know the the big quote from it. I think. Yeah, yeah, and and man, this one had quite a few of them. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, what what did you think? Uh, so notice that the title card changed. 
between this episode yes. and the last one. Um, I, I hope they do that with all of them. It, well, it seems pretty obvious that they will to me. Uh, but yeah, that was really cool because I was watching it and uh, watching the first episode, and then they did the thing with all the doll parts, and I was like, oh. <laughs> That's really cool. I want to see see them do that every. I want to see that every episode. And then they did uh, all the knives and pumpkins on this one. I was like, ooh, I hope they're going to be different every episode now. Yeah. Well, it's just it's a nice, smart touch. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. They could have they could have gone the easy way and just done a basic title card and you know been done with it. You know, same title card every episode, but the fact that they're like personalizing them like that, it's just like that extra bit of care. You can tell like they love the fact that they're doing this. Yeah. And they're gonna like plus every episode if they can. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to what the next one's is gonna be. Yeah. Um and l- let's talk about references. So like the big reference in this episode like the first episode was very much like let's reference all the different Chucky movies in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, the the big one in this one was uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. Oh yeah, because yeah, just all over the episode. It's Halloween and Hackensack. Hmm. Um. What What did you think of the the cold open with uh, Charles and the razor apple? I uh, see that. I think that's another thing that kind of stuck with me. Because I don't know how invested I want to be in Chucky before he became a serial killer. Right. I see, mean, I'm... it'll it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. I guess, but I don't. I I'm I'm not I'm not champing at the bit to to see what Chucky was like before he became Chucky. Right. You know, it could either go. It could either be super compelling or not very compelling at all um i'm worried that they're gonna kind of go that route with like the dad was abusive killed the mom and then chucky killed the dad or charles killed the dad i feel like that's the route they're gonna go which the the route i would prefer is this what if straight up uh charles killed them both you know what i mean yeah and make make him completely irredeemable yeah to to me that it seems like that that's the way it's going to go because uh, if you remember in the first episode, mm-hmm. when he shows up to his mom, like he was having, he had his mask on or something, and and, and he walks in on his mom. You know, yeah. you have that whole kind of like terrifying thing, and then they kind of echo that in the second episode with him biting into the apple, and then him giving the apple to the to the trick or treat lady. Yeah, and um, like. Like that number one sets up a real like sociopathic thing with like with him like biting into the apple. Like he sees the razor blade there and he just fucking goes for it. That um that made me wince. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like it, it's it's really messed up. Um it just yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on like I don't know how much of a young Charles Lee Ray we really need to know about. Yeah. But but, but at the same time I'm like, well, let's see where they go with this. Right, you know, because I I was super interested when they brought in that backstory during Cult of or Curse of Chucky, with yeah. uh, Charles like having kidnapped Nika's mom and trying to like raise his own little like pseudo family that sort of thing. Yeah, and it kind of um, and if if I'm parceling this out correctly, the ring that Tiffany finds in Bride of Chucky, I think it was meant for Nika's mom. Yeah, that's very possible. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, and the fact that, like, those scenes in Curse of Chucky, uh, line up, like, days or hours before, um, the, the events of Child's Play before he died, you know, so little things like that are interesting. That's why I'm kind of giving this, uh, young Charles Lee Ray thing, uh, um, the benefit of a doubt, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like whenever TV shows or or established franchises kind of do this, like, oh, let's see where it where it began. I just kind of like roll my eyes because uh, I don't necessarily want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't think, but yeah, because you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to risk Chucky being. You don't want to risk Charles being too sympathetic. Well, it's not so much that that I just don't think that I want to. 
try tried to find like the one moment where the character turned you know yeah and I, we're, we're kind of already getting that with uh um jake anyway i think yeah i mean like we'll see if he ends up actually you know yeah. killing anybody but it, it kind of looks like he's thinking about it for sure well it looks like their paths might parallel a little bit you know what i mean yeah um now, w- one thing that I noticed, it, it's kind of a hallmark in the series, but the use of reflections, and it, it's very much like, I think it's the second time I'll mention Brian De Palma on the uh, the podcast so far, but like, uh, I, I, the usage of the reflection, um, like number one in the scene with uh, the dishwasher. Yeah. And then also when uh, Chucky hands Jake the knife uh, and the way that they use the reflection, it's very much like, uh, you ever seen the movie Dressed to Kill by Brian De Palma? Uh, no, I have not. Okay, uh, very good thriller, intensely problematic, you would say, these days, uh, because of (laughs) the way it deals with, like, uh, transgender issues and that sort of thing, but it's it's a fascinating movie, um, but uh, a lot of reflections in there because they're dealing with, like, split identities and everything like that, but, like, all those, all those mirror shots are totally out of, like, the Brian De uh, De Palma cinematic uh, playbook. Hmm. So, okay. you know, and th- th- that's one thing that I'm enjoying doing this show is like kind of dropping like, hey, you should watch this kind of recommendations here and there. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Uh, if you get a chance, watch Dress to Kill. It's not as like uh, it's more of the thriller genre than like horror, but it's still it's still really good. Oh, yeah. I I enjoy a good thriller from time to time. Yeah, especially when Michael Jackson's involved. Mm. Is Is <laughs> that what happens in? No, I was making a joke uh, reference to Thriller, the music video. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, whenever I have to explain a joke, it isn't worth it. <laughs> well, I, my brain didn't go there immediately. No, but, no, it's okay. But, um, but, but, yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good joke there, man. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. Uh, you'll be able to come back for the, the next episode, I guess. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> um, so, um. Like as a writer, how did you feel about the the pacing and the structure of the episode? I think they did pretty good because it it the episode kept going at a pretty good clip. Um, I don't think it really slowed down for one. Per, maybe at the beginning when they're just getting to school, but mm-hmm. you know that's. Well, you're just you're just starting the episode. You have to kind yeah. of like set all this stuff up. Yeah, it takes a little bit for like the the action start because you have to get the credits going and everything like that. You know, with them in the car. Um, but there's still a lot of like heavy ground covered in that. Like the the whole thing with Jake asking about like my seat's hot. Yeah, just just kind of setting up that like class difference between them all. And yeah. then like um, Logan giving Jake that like I don't even know how much it was. Probably like a twenty for lunch or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, but um, yeah, like, structurally, I think the episode's great, especially, like, once Chucky kind of goes missing and Jake has his little freak out and he's running along the streets. I like that kind of parallel pacing between Jake's frantic energy and then Chucky just, like, walking along or just sitting down playing a video game or trying to casually kill a couple of teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I like that contrast in what's going on there. That yeah, was fun. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, like, Character-wise, they covered just a whole lot of ground with that too, because you get all the um, the Annie basically raised Junior. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like all the adults get developed pretty well, especially um, Devin's mom, Devin the podcaster. His mom being the yeah, detective, yeah. Which you, that's that's gonna be fun to see that play out. Yeah, and you you get the idea that she she knows that uh, Devin is is gay. It it, you know, it may have already been broached. In the yeah, I, I think first episode, Dev- but I, I think Devin being gay is pretty much known in the in the school, the community, and by the parents and everything like that. Yeah. Um. the The only person who I think is probably still closeted is uh, Junior. I, uh, I think no, Junior. No. I didn't really uh, get that. Well, as, as it comes from a combination Junior. of things in the episode. Well, in the, the the first two episodes, number one, um, like during the dinner table scene in the first episode where Junior kind of keeps needling um, Jake about being gay. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, just keeps pushing the topic in a way where I'm just, I'm just kind of like, hmm. And then the kid uh, who like tried to ask him out, and he's like, no, flattered happens all the time. 
And then in this episode, I'm not going to say that, like, sexual performance anxiety is a sign of someone being gay, but, like, the, the, the thing between him and Lexi seemed, like, really forced. Mm-hmm. Like, like, he was maybe going through the motions. I don't know. So, yeah, that's just well, looking at a bunch of different little signs. Yeah. Well, now, now that you mention it, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll start thinking about that. A bit more from the yeah. I mean, on. and if if he's not gay, if he's maybe ace or something like that, that's perfectly fine too. But like, I'm looking at like just the context clues so far, and uh, that that's where that's where I'm seeing it go right now. But then again, like they could throw a, a curveball at us. You know what I mean? Yeah, but also like I I'm the type of person like that sort of stuff just kind of sails over my head if it's not explicit. Well, because so... it's all the teen drama stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that this, hey, I'm here to see Chucky stab something or choke something, and uh, the only drama I want to know is which team's gonna die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> which well, which doesn't know, mean I can't be in, you know, involved with uh, with like the characters. With, with, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just that. So, so normally in um, in slasher movies there's not really that great of a plot or the dialogue isn't really that great, but, uh, and I think that's, what's kind of setting the show apart because, because they have that time for these characters to kind of breathe and for us to get to know them. And they're turning out to be very compelling kids. Yeah. Which I'm finding interesting. Like, um, you know, I, I really think that Lexi is going to be a standout character. I think that like, She's going to be one of those problematic characters to start, but I think things are going to turn around for her in such a way where she's going to become kind of a uh, like a favorite character. You know, just based on like my experience with horror uh, and slashers and that sort of thing, that's the trajectory that I'm seeing for her character. Oh, ab- absolutely! Like even even at two episodes in, they've already got a lot gone a lot deeper on a lot of these characters than most other movies have. Yeah. Uh, a quick question for you. So, mm-hmm. Devin, do you think he knows about the Chucky doll? Like, does he know about, like, uh, do you think he suspects that Chucky might be a the same Chucky from all those things that happened in the past? Hmm. Because I keep getting that feeling. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, um... It's it's very possible that he knows about all the stuff that has happened previously, uh, you know, since he's like super into, you know, all the slasher and murder stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, because like part of it is like I would like for Jake to be happy and him having his little podcaster boyfriend would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. But on On the other hand, like I'm like excited about the drama of the fact that like maybe this, this kid is trying to use him. And that pushes Jake over the edge a little bit. So it's one of those things where it's like, I want to see my characters happy, but I also want to see my characters tortured. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so it's it's very much a push and pull for me. But I'm, I'm wondering if Devin knows more than he's letting on. Hmm. That's uh, that's entirely possible. Uh, or and and I just kind of this kind of just crossed my mind. What if Devin has one of the Chuckies? Which would be super interesting because we know that there's a bidding war for all those different Chucky dolls. Yeah. You know, and then it it makes you wonder if like, is there uh, the, also the idea is that maybe there's another Chucky that's alive and active and maybe Devin has that Chucky and he doesn't know it. Ooh, that could, that could be it too. Yeah. So there's, there's so much going on and I, I love the fact that there's so much potential for chaos so far. Yeah, there definitely is. And and kind of the one thing that that has piqued my interest has been uh Junior's mom's phone call. Yeah, w- like what is the situation with that? That's um Yeah, that's... We, we didn't get any other hints. We know that she is kind of like suspicious that Jake knows something, but we're not really getting a sense of like anything that um she's messed uh, she's in with right now. Yeah. So I'm curious. I think we'll probably get some development of that in the next episode. I think just kind of spending time with the adults and the kids was a good idea for episode two. But they're going to start moving some gears along. And I think we'll be seeing Andy within the next episode or two Ooh, as well. I would like that. 
I would like we, we heard him in that first episode. Yeah, that was totally but like, Andy. But I think Andy's going to show up and start causing some trouble. Yeah. But, um, so, do you have any other uh, final thoughts before we kind of wrap up here? Because we've been talking for about 50 minutes so far, so I think uh, we've got a have fun we? episode here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Time flies when you're having fun with your friends to the end. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I guess you're right, but uh, yeah, no, I don't... I, um, really the only other thing I, that I noticed when I was watching it, and it's not, it's not a big thing or anything, just something that I noticed when, uh, Caroline and Chucky are playing the video game, uh-huh. uh, and you, you see the screen of them going around and killing the, the zombies or the monsters or whatever. Uh-huh. And you see Caroline has like a score of like. 17 and Chucky has a score of like 430. Right. Yeah, that that's one of those like really fun little <laughs> subtle details that says a whole lot right there. Yeah, I I <laughs> I like it when I notice stuff like that. That stuff is fun to, to fun to find. Yeah, especially with him like, "Yeah, nah, you should murder a kid. It's great." Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm kind of hoping like like this is a town that's full of like secrets and and stuff like that, but I'm kind of hoping that Chucky shows up in a number of ways as just that uh, like that little devil on the shoulder. Yeah, like, uh, like I it would be interesting to me that if like Chucky becomes this thing that like everybody in the community knows about to some degree, like maybe he's revealed himself to them and he's kind of like pushing them in different ways and they don't talk about it, like he's their dark little secret or something like that. That might be an interesting approach, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that little bit about the video game, thank you for that, because, yeah, I just remembered that, uh, thanks to you, and, yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> I noticed that at the time, and it made me laugh my ass off. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, I think I think we're pretty much uh, going to wrap up here, but before I do that, um, is there anything that you would like to plug? Uh, well, I my Patreon is really the only thing I have going right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we'll definitely get that linked in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, can you can you run over what you're offering on your Patreon? Actually, uh, it'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'm not really offering a whole lot because it's just well, like hey, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It, it's just like, hey, sign up and you get to see these posts that I make mm-hmm. that I'm making about the stuff that I'm working on, which at this point is just my my uh pitch decks and also i'm trying to get my halloween costume finished uh th- before the end of the week so uh, so so what's your halloween costume going to be i'm going to go as uh starro but like oh, one cool. of the, one of the starros that you have like over your face uh-huh one oh, of the starro cool. spores so i'm going to pop on my green lantern shirt and <laughs> very cool uh, now, um, like, is there a, a like a specific tier, um, for your your Patreon that people should go for, or is it just like any amount you donate to it gets you whatever? It's basically any amount you donate will get you whatever. Because I'm not really yeah. like, I I tried going into here's the different tiers of stuff that I can do for you. It's each, too much each, hassle each month. Man. Yeah, and it's like yeah. I can't really keep up with with that, so I'm just. Here's yeah, it's hard I'm enough to doing. get people to pitch in a dollar, you know what I mean? So just like, hey, you can have everything if you just donate a dollar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I am going to have you back for uh, Child's Play 3, because I know that you and I are going to have a lot of fun talking about that one. I'm very um, excited. Yeah, Andy in military school. And uh, I would love to have you back for another episode of um, the TV show as well. Um, I-, I think that would be a lot of fun. It seems to me like you and I are both going to enjoy this TV show a lot, so I think it'll be fun to kind of come back towards the end of the series and like talk to you and like, how did it meet your expectations and all that? Yeah, I, I am definitely down for that. Of course. Well, I guess with that, I think we can go ahead and close out here Uh, for all of you who are listening. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe to the show on Spotify or your favorite podcast aggregator. Um, Phil, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to have you on here. You're one of my besties, and I'm so glad we got to talk about Chucky for a little while. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course, and you are welcome back anytime, my friend. Hot dog. (laughs) So with that being said, uh, thank you very much to all the listeners, and we will will see you next week with Chucky Episode 3. Goodbye. Bye.
you have been listening to Kids' Stuff, a Chucky podcast, a Haunted MTL original podcast. Our theme is Pop Goes the Weasel by Kevin McLeod. You can find more of Kevin McLeod's music at incompetech.filmmusic.io. If you want to find out more about me, the podcaster, you can just go to hpkomics.com, hpcomics.com, or you can find me on the socials at hpkomic. For more great horror content, do not forget to visit hauntedmtl.com.